So I think now I'm going to be talking stuff out of the Utah History Encyclopedia. This is the Anasazi in the Utah History Encyclopedia. The Anasazi, or Ancient Ones, thought to be ancestors of the modern Pueblo Indians, inhabited the Four Corners country of southern Utah, southwestern Colorado, northwestern New Mexico, and northern Arizona from about A.D. 200 to A.D. 1300, leaving a heavy accumulation of house remains and debris. Recent research has traced the Anasazi to the archaic peoples who practice a wandering, hunting, and food-gathering lifestyle from about 6000 BC until some of them began to develop into the distinctive Anasazi culture in the first in the last millennium BC during the last two centuries BC the people began to supplement their food gathering with maize horticulture by AD 1200 horticulture had assumed a significant role in the economy because of their culture change because their culture changed continually and not always gradually researchers have divided the occupation into periods each with its own with its characteristic complex of settlement and artifact styles since 1927 the most widely accepted nomenclature has been the picos classification which is generally applicable to the whole Anasazi Southwest, although originally intended to represent a series of developmental sta stages rather than periods, the Pecos classification has come to be used as a period sequence. Basket Maker 1, pre-1000 BC, an obsolete synonym for archaic. Basket, ma Basket Maker 2, 1000 BC to AD 450. Basket Maker 3 is AD 450 to 750. Pueblo 1 is 750 to 900. Pueblo 2 is 900 to 1150. Pueblo 3 is 1150 to 1300. Pueblo 4 is 1300 to 1600. Pueblo 5 is 1600 to the present. Historic Pueblo. The last two periods are not important to this discussion as the Pueblo peoples had left Utah by the end of the Pueblo III period. As the Anasazi settled into their village farming lifestyle, recognizable regional variants or subcultures emerged, which can be usefully combined into two larger groups. The eastern branches of the Anasazi culture, including the Mesa Verde Anasazi of southeastern Utah and southwestern Colorado, and the Chaco Anasazi of northwestern New Mexico. The western Anasazi include the Kayenta Anasazi of northeastern Arizona and the Virgin Anasazi of southwestern Utah and northwestern Arizona. To the north of the Anasazi peoples, north of the Colorado and Escalante rivers, Utah was the home of heter heterogeneous group of small village dwellers known collectively as Fremont. Although they continued to move around in pursuit of seasonally available foods, the earliest Anasazi concentrated um, concentrated increasing amounts of effort on the growing of crops and the storage of surpluses. The, they made exquisite baskets and sandals. For this reason, they have come, come to be known as basket makers. They stored their goods and often their dead in deep pits and circular cysts. Small pits often lined with upright stone slabs and roofed over with a platform of poles, twigs, grass, slabs, or rocks, and mud. Basket Maker 2 houses were somewhat more sturdy than those of the archaic pre predes predecessors, predecessors, being rather like a Paiute winter wiki up or a navajo hogan very few have been excavated <clears throat> by ad 500 
the early Anasazi people had settled into the well-developed farming cult village culture stage that we know as ba Basket Maker 3. Although they probably practiced some seasonal traveling and continued to make considerable use of the wild resources, they primarily had become farmers living in large villages. Their houses were well-constructed pit structures consisting of Hogan-like superstructure built over a knee or waist-deep pit, often with a small second room or antechamber on the south or southeast side. Settlements of this time period are scattered widely over the canyons and mesas of southern Utah. They consist of small hamlets of one to two one to three houses and occasionally vi villages of a dozen or more structures. About AD 700, evidence of the development of politico-religious mechanisms of village organization and integration appears in the form of large communal pit structures. One such structure with a diameter of 40 feet has been excavated next to the old highway in Recap Recapture Creek by archaeologists from Brigham Young University. Three important changes took place before AD 750. The old Atlatl spear thrower that had been used to propel darts, small spears, from time immemorial was replaced by the bow and arrow. The bean was added to corn and squash to form a major supplement to the diet, and the people began to make pottery. By AD 600, the Anasazi were producing quantities of two types of pottery, gray utility ware and black on white painted ware. Painted ware. By AD 750, these farming and pottery making people in their stable villages were on the threshold of the lifestyle that we think of as being typically Puebloan. And from this time on, we can call them Pueblos. Perhaps the most significant developments in the Pueblo one times, AD 750 to 900, were one. The replace were one, the replacement of pit house habitations with large living rooms on the surface. Two, the development of a sophisticated ventilator deflector system for ventilating pit rooms. Three, the growth of the San Juan Redware pottery complex, red on orange, then black on orange pottery manufactured in southeastern Utah. And four, some major shifts in settlement distribution with populations concentrating in certain areas while abandoning others. The 250-year period subsequent to AD 900 is known as Pueblo II. The tendency toward aggregation evidence in Pueblo I sites reversed itself in this period. As the people dispersed themselves widely over the land in thousands of small stone houses, during Pueblo II, good stone masonry replaced the pole and abode architecture of Pueblo I. The surface rooms became year-round habitations, and the pit houses, now completely subterranean, probably assumed the largely ceremonial role of the Pueblo Kiva. It was it was during this period that the small cliff granaries became popular. The house style known as the Unit Pueblo, which had its beginning during the previous period, became the universal settlement from form during this period. In the Unit Pueblo, the main house is the block of rectangular living and storage rooms located on the surface immediately north or northwest of an underground kiva. Immediately southeast of this is a trash, an ash dump, or, or midden. The redware pottery industry continued to flourish as a fine to flourish as a fine red slipped ware with black designs was traded throughout much of the Colorado Plateau. During the middle to late Pueblo II period, however, the redware tradition ended in the country north of the San Juan River. Although it blossomed in the area south of the river, virtually all of the red or orange pottery found in San Juan County sites 
post dating AD 1000 was made south of the San Juan River around Navajo Mountain in the Kayenta Anasazi country. The reasons for this shift are unknown and the problem is a fascinating one. Production and refinement of the black on white and gray wares were wares continued interrupted in both areas but the redware tradition migrated across what appears to have been an ethnic boundary the styles of stone artifacts also changed somewhat during pueblo too the beautiful barbed and tanged christmas tree style point that had been popular since basket maker three times was replaced first by a corner notch style with flaring stem and rounded base by the triangular style with side notches also by the end of the period and old old trough shaped mete that had been popular for half a millennium was replaced by a flat slab form with no raised sides the change in grinding technology appears to to have accompanied a change from a hard shattering flint type of corn to a soft non-shattering flower corn this permitted use of smaller metates and thus it thus also increased the efficient use of the floor space during the 1100 and 1200s the anasazi population began once again to aggregate into large villages this period is known as Pueblo III, and it lasted until the final abandonment of the Four Corners country by the Anasazi during the late 1200s. Numerous small unit Pueblos continued to be occupied during this period, but there was a tendency for them to become more massive and to enclose the kivas within the room block. A number of very large villas developed. It was, the, it was during this period that the that most of the cliff villages such as the famous examples at Mesa Verde National Park and Navajo National Monument are built. During Pueblo three times the Mesa Verde Anasazi developed the thick walled highly polished incredibly beautiful pottery known as Mesa Verde black on white. They also continued to make corrugated gray pottery. Red wares often with two or three color designs continued to be imported north of the river from the Kayenta country. Arrowheads continued in the triangular side notched form, but were often smaller than those of the previous period. St starting sometime after AD 1250, the Anasazi moved out of the San Juan County, often often walking away from their settlements as though they intended to return in a few minutes or so it looks why did they leave behind their beautiful cooking pots and baskets perhaps they had no means to transport them when forced to migrate a long distance it was more efficient to leave the bulky items and replace them after they reached their destination we do not know we do know they move south Classic late Mesa Verde style settlements can still be recognized in New Mexico and Arizona in high defensible locations in areas where the local Anasazi sites look quite different. By AD 1400, almost all the Anasazi from, from throughout the southwest had aggregated into large pueblos scattered through the drainages of L the Little Colorado and Rio Grande rivers in Arizona and New Mexico. Their descendants are still there in the few surviving pueblos. Why did they leave? It is possible to find a it, it is impossible to find a single cause that can explain this, but there appear to be several that contributed. First, the climate during the Pueblo 3 period was somewhat un, unstable and erratic rainfall patterns and periods of drought. This weather proclaimed climaxed with a problem climaxed with a 30-year drought starting at about 1270 that coincided with a cooling trend that significantly shortened the growing season perhaps the expanding population had pressed the limits and the land's capacity to support the people so that they were unable to survive the climatic upheavals of the 13th century could they have been driven out by nomadic tribes such as the Utes or Navajos that's it, guys. I can't go any longer.
There is no direct evidence that either group or anything. Uh, anyways.